It's hard to imagine now, but one day a public project may be built right through this neighborhood. The sounds of children playing and scenes of families gathering for backyard barbecues would be replaced by the construction of a needed highway, airport, or a similar public works project. So what happens to those families and the homes when they are displaced? According to the Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Property Acquisition Policies Act of 1970, housing must be made available to displaced persons before they are required to move, and the housing that's available must also be comparable. It sounds simple, but it's not. Comparable housing can mean different things to different people. As defined in federal regulations, a comparable dwelling is one which is functionally equivalent and substantially the same as the acquired dwelling. For example, this home has eight rooms, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, a living room, and a dining room. The size of the home? 2,000 square feet. Now, by law, this family must be provided a similar home with basically the same features to meet the functional equivalence requirement meaning you can do the same type of activities in the given room and space available. Take a look at this chart. Three replacement homes have been chosen for a family. The first has eight rooms, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, and 1,900 square feet. The second home has about the same square footage but fewer rooms and bathrooms. The third is a little larger than the original home. Now of the three, which one is functionally equivalent? Well, replacement 3 would be the choice, since it meets all the functional equivalencies, even though the square footage is slightly higher. Here's another example. In this home, the owners chose to create a master bedroom by removing a wall that separated two smaller bedrooms. Functionally, the home now has three bedrooms, one of which is a large master bedroom. So a comparable replacement home needs to be basically the same size, but with three bedrooms, with one capable of serving as a master bedroom. But there's something else that must be considered. Besides functional equivalence, the replacement home must be substantially the same in a variety of aspects. No two homes are the same because a home is more than just a house. To determine what is substantially the same, you must consider several points spelled out in federal regulations. First, is the agency selected replacement home located in an equally desirable neighborhood? You must make sure the new home is not located in an area subject to unreasonable and adverse environmental conditions, like next to an airport or a landfill. The replacement home should also be located on a typical sized site with customary landscaping and it must be sufficient in size to accommodate the occupants. When choosing comparable housing, we're looking for an area that is free of any adverse environmental conditions. And by that we mean we're choosing a neighborhood similar to what they're in today. We would not uh, look in a neighborhood that was next to a junkyard or next to a sewer treatment plant. For example, this is a most unusual home. It was originally a convent and it's over 150 years old. Inside, it has all the modern conveniences. You know, we're really concerned about this project. We don't think that you'll be able to replace the home that we have. Not only is it a very large home, and, and we have a lot of sentimental attachment to it, but also it's a historic home. Come on, let me show you around. Our home has a total of 10 rooms. There's five bedrooms, three and a half baths, and approximately 3,800 square feet of living area. Another feature that our house has that you don't usually find in the city is that we have a full side yard with a pond on it. There are other homes in the neighborhood built about the same time, but most lack the same square footage. There are modern replicas of older homes nearby, but they are smaller. In a nearby neighborhood, there are similar sized homes, but they tend to be much more expensive. The area is considered more desirable than the subject neighborhood. The homes are clustered around a small landscaped park and are constructed of better materials. 
The dilemma we face is to replace the home in a much more expensive neighborhood or consider a home lacking certain amenities of the subject property. Situations like this are common. While determining a replacement home, use reasonable judgment and consider trade-offs which offset amenities that may be lacking. Since no two homes are exact twins, we need to use a reasonable degree of judgment. For example, a 30-year-old home in excellent condition might be considered comparable to a 10-year-old home in average condition. Earlier we mentioned availability of housing. Remember, you cannot require someone to move until another comparable dwelling is made available. So how is a home made available? For homeowners and tenant occupants, the government will make a replacement unit available by guaranteeing adequate funds to purchase or rent a comparable replacement dwelling. The payments are called replacement housing payments. They are often referred to by a wide variety of names such as rental subsidy, purchase supplement, or price differential. Housing is made available by providing additional funds to assist with renting or purchasing a replacement home. The next important step, when does the replacement housing need to be available? You must be able to offer the displaced homeowner an actual dwelling they can occupy at two critical time periods. The first, when calculating the replacement housing payments, the amount must be based on a unit that is available. Second, at the time you actually ask a person to move, you may not issue a notice to vacate unless housing is immediately available. Now that we know about comparable housing and when it must be available, it's time to look into some other requirements of the Uniform Act. The housing we use to compute payment eligibility and the housing that a family ultimately purchases must be decent, safe, and sanitary, or DSS. Replacement homes must meet six minimum DSS standards. First, they must be structurally sound. In other words, in good repair and weather tight. They must have a safe wiring system, meeting local electrical code requirements. There must be adequate heating if necessary and adequate space for the intended occupants. That includes a bathroom in good working order and a kitchen for all types of dwellings other than sleeping rooms. DSS also requires safe egress or exit to an open space at ground level and be reasonably barrier free for handicapped persons. Location is another key factor when considering replacement housing. People choose a place to live for a variety of reasons. Cost, access to employment, schools, services, shopping, and even for religious reasons. Be aware of these potential considerations when selecting replacement housing. The location required in the regulations does not mean the same location. Instead, it means a location that is not less desirable. For example, many families choose a neighborhood because of schools. So it's reasonable to attempt to place those families in the same school attendance area or district. If that isn't possible, a neighborhood should be found that offers the same quality of schools. Also, some people choose a location because it's close to work. In these situations, distance to employment may be a critical factor. You'll need to consider this when choosing a replacement neighborhood. For instance, the suburban area outside the city of St. Louis is made up of many communities. Each has its good and bad points. If access to employment is of particular concern, you'll find a wide radius of possibilities around employment centers. In other words, there are several communities where you can select comparable housing. What we mean when we say that we attempt to locate property in a subject area that is equally or um, more desirable than the displacement property is that we are searching for neighboring areas that a reasonable person would consider to be um, equal to or better than the area that is that people are being displaced from. Remember, location issues are subjective and people will have different opinions. Use reasonable judgment because ultimately it's a judgment issue. A comparable replacement dwelling must also meet the financial means of the displaced person or family. For homeowners, 
you must supplement the purchase price of the comparable dwelling to ensure the owner is essentially returned to the same financial status. For tenants, you must supplement the comparable replacement rent, which exceeds the current rent, or to the extent that it exceeds 30% of the household income. In short, for owners, use the make whole approach, and for tenants, use the make whole approach or an income subsidy based on the criteria detailed in 49 CFR Part 24.402. In most circumstances, rules established by federal regulations will help guide your relocation decisions. But there are exceptions and trade-offs to consider based on available housing in your market. Some of the selection criteria used for replacement housing for displaced families is that they are in an equal or better desirable similar type neighborhood and that they have access to public facilities such as schools, hospitals and transportation and also that the access to their employment is equal or better. The key? analyze your situation and use regulatory latitude with prudence. Relocating homeowners or tenants because of a public project can become a volatile issue. Not everyone will be happy. Resolving those emotional and financial issues can be very difficult. The federal guidelines requiring you to find decent, safe and sanitary housing that is functionally equivalent and substantially the same are designed to help you reduce the emotional and financial issues during relocation.